now to Schittel Björn. He's the CEO of Quanta Fuel, and he will talk about his view regarding the pyrolysis application. I see your picture, and hopefully you can hear us. Yes, you can hear us? Oh, he can't hear us. So I we can hear it. Now I'm also uh, unmuted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have been unmuted. Uh, we all get more and more used yeah. to these kinds of things as long as this pandemic is <laughs> duration is. Okay. Yes, we are. <laughs> Shetel, thank you for being here. Please, please go on. The floor is yours. 20 minutes. Thank you. Well, I'm sure that uh, first of all, thank you for uh, for allowing me and and Quanta Fuel to. Uh, uh, participate. Uh, of course, uh, we are uh, slightly in the same business as Carlos uh, that just presented, so I'm sure that there will be some overlap of information, but uh, hopefully you can you can bear with me on, on, on that one. Uh, next slide, please. Well, I think, I think uh, we are all familiar with the tremendous plastic problems that has arisen, and, and during these 20 minutes we are talking about the equivalent of 18 million uh, plastic bags going into the into the ocean, and and that has of course uh, created uh, tremendous awareness around this problem, especially the last three or four years. Um, I got question from time to time uh, why this has not happened long time ago. Uh, reality, I think, is that uh, and quantum fuel started six uh, to seven years ago. It was not. Uh, that much attention around uh, plastic waste littering as it has been the last couple of years. Actually, something that has emerged um, as, a, as a huge uh, global problem and, and reached awareness um, over the last uh, three or four years. But more importantly, um, as also Carlos mentioned, um, these awareness has also created new policies. and. Uh, for us, uh, the important part is uh, the first one is that EU has aimed for a 50% uh, recycling grade within 2025. To be honest, I think that is very ambitious, uh, especially consider where we are today. Um, uh, but anyway, it's an uh, ambitious target and it's going to demand a lot from the industry. It's going to demand a lot from communities around and countries and it means that a lot more material will start to emerge and secondly of course uh, this tax uh, that was now implemented going to be implemented from january next year on on virgin plastic going to create a premium market for recycled uh, material and that's going to be part of the foundation of course for uh, chemical recycling next slide please and this is uh, what it's all about, uh, trying to create this uh, circular economy, uh, trying to take the worst uh, household waste, the problematic waste, uh, back into circulation. And as uh, Plastic Energy also, uh, I think, pointed out uh, clearly, is that by doing this chemically, we can break it apart on a molecular level. We can send it in our... in for us, we're going to send it to Ludwigshafen, to BSF, and produce new plastic products um, of the highest quality, uh, used for food application and, and other high quality application. And in theory, we could do this then uh, forever. Next, please. Maybe I shouldn't say this, but uh, plastic is actually a, a fantastic product. Uh, there is uh, one of the fastest growing man-made substances over the last 30, 40 years. There is 800,000 people uh, in Europe working in uh, the plastic industry. There is close to a million in, in the US. And I think that we can all agree uh, that we need to reduce the amount of plastic that we use. Um, but it's also a material where we don't really have a lot of alternatives. I'm sitting now speaking into a PC. I uh, use my mobile phone uh, on a daily basis and, and it's made by plastic and we don't have any very good alternative. Trying to change the dreaded carrier bag from plastic to biological material uh, is three to four times the, um, the CO2 footprint. 
53% of the weight of an Airbus is plastic. It's going to be much heavier without. So for a number of applications, we, we don't really have uh, especially good alternatives. And when it comes to food packaging, uh, it's a choice between two evils. Um, there has been produced optimal packaging using different type of materials to, to save food quality and uh, extend shelf life. To have that uh, in a simpler version, you will, you will increase uh, food waste. So I think it's all down to solving the problem of the waste and uh, trying to create this circular economy and get the value back into plastic uh, waste and get it removed from the waste stream. Next, please. We are uh, obviously uh, not the only company that uh, are looking into this uh, market. Uh, you heard from uh, one of our competitors just recently, but all the all the big players within the petrochemical industry, um, the, the oil majors, uh, the recycling companies is working on this. There was a report from McKinsey last year stating that they believe the chemical recycling would become a 75 billion US dollar market within uh, 10 years with a 25 billion US dollar uh, profit to it. And uh, now uh, for over the last uh, couple of years, uh, the whole industry is gathering uh, behind this uh, new, uh, new market. Next, please. What we are trying to do uh, that we believe uh, potentially separates us a little bit uh, from uh, other companies is that pyrolysis of plastic uh, is not really a quantum fuel invention. Um, there has been uh, a plant in, in operation in Thailand since 2006. There, there's a number of companies that that do that in, in some scale. What we have tried to do in quantum fuel is to build what we refer to as a miniature refinery on the back end of the pyrolysis reactor. And what we're trying to do there is to remove um, impurities from the oil, impurities being um, ash particles, nitrogen, sulfur, uh, chlorine. We are also trying to change the molecular structure because when you heat plastic, you will produce uh, a lot of aromats, you will produce a lot of olefins that are challenging for the next step in the value chain. And the reference to um, a refinery is that we have two unique uh, catalyst solutions. The first one is a hydrocracker, means that it uh, shorten uh, long uh, hydrocarbons, open up structure. And the second one is a hydrosaturation, meaning that we add hydrogen, either hydrogen that is already in the gas, or that we add hydrogen to complete these molecules again, to saturate them and produce as most alkenes as we possibly can. We have a name, Quanta fuel. Um, we believed, uh, I must admit, two or three years ago that we should produce for combustion engines. That has changed. Um, maybe we should change our na name also at one point. But now everything that we produce will go back into new plastic. We have a project together with uh, BSF, our partner, to uh, try to crack everything down below C12, C13 and to have that go as directly as possible into new uh, energy uh, production. We also, the same way as plastic energy, uses the um, energy in the plastic to uh, run the plant. Uh, we produce uh, about 10% uh, gas that we uh, C1 to C5 that we use to, to uh, run the plant. We also have an ash fraction that goes for incineration and uh, for and for uh, electricity production or long distance heating and uh, by doing that uh, when we uh, do our lca uh, we did one about one and a half two years ago you can't do that really yourself uh, carbon limit did it for us it shows a 90 percent co2 reduction in production next slide please 
As I said, uh, there is a number of uh, very large companies that uh, have uh, spoken targets for this market. Uh, Shell has announced that they want to do a million ton. Nesta wants to do a million ton. So we have um, decided to partner up with some uh, large companies ourselves. Um, the first one is Vito, that uh, some of you might have heard about. Uh, they uh, is a very large company with 232 billion US dollar of revenue last year, and the largest independent uh, logistic company and trader of uh, energy. But they also have a lot of infrastructure. Uh, and the reason that uh, we decided to go into a partnership with them is that they have a, a global presence. Um, they have six refineries around the world, and we have always had uh plan and strategy together uh, that we should build large scale plants um uh, close to their existing infrastructure we also announced recently that we have started now uh, pre preparations for amsterdam and uh, antwerp we have a, a similar relationship with uh, bsf uh, strategic investor strategic partnership and we intend also in, in due time to look at the opportunity to build uh, capacity together but uh, more than that it's also a development partnership and um, we develop uh, and try to improve the entire quantum field technology further and of course for a relatively small company as, as we still are we are about 60 employees as of today is uh, tremendously helpful uh, to have um, the support uh, of uh, a company with uh, 160 years of experience in, in the chemical process industry and 120 more than 120,000 employees. So that has been one of the best decisions probably that we ever have taken uh, mm -hmm. to enter into such a, a partnership and BSF has been tremendously helpful also on a day-to-day -day basis in uh, in uh, in Denmark where we just have uh, started up uh, our first commercial uh, plant and the last uh, strategic partner is Kirby uh, probably better known as uh, the Lego family the, the founders of um, of uh, of Lego so we believe that we have three very strong strategic partners, both within the logistic, within the chemical process and engineering, and within the plastic industry. Next slide, please. We, the first plant in Denmark has a nameplate capacity uh, of 20,000 ton, producing about 16,000 ton per year. Um, we have to admit that uh, this is still a relatively small scale. Uh, I think that the BSF alone uses uh, 20 million ton uh, of NAFTA on a, on a global basis, if I'm not mistaken. So for us, uh, this is all about being able to industrialize this in scale. We need to uh, be able to be relevant uh, as a company. We need to be relevant for our partners. Um, I uh, don't think that BSF has set any target yet, but uh, other large companies have set uh, quite uh, large targets for themselves, and, and we need to be able to deliver uh, and, 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 uh, on that scale. So the next step for us uh, is what we refer to as an uh, industrial uh, rollout. Um, after uh, Skive, uh, we plan for a second plant in Norway, and that I think uh, many will find interesting because it's a combined plant uh, where they already have some existing mechanical recycling technology where we then uh, plan to establish chemical recycling next to that meaning that we will take the fragments uh, of the feedstock that has that are the simplest to take mechanically we will take mechanically and then we will take the other fractions to recycle chemically and we believe that with that combination we are capable of having the highest possible uh, recycling rate after um, uh, Christian Sund comes then 
the first large scale plants of 80 to 100,000 ton. We are looking at one in Denmark, and as I said, uh, we are uh, in discussions with VTOL and their subsidiary VTTI for Antwerp and uh, Amsterdam. Next slide, please. This is how we envision uh, at the moment that uh, an 80,000 plant will look like. Um, we have obviously uh, gained a lot of experience in the building process of our first commercial plant. We had uh, a demo plant before that. And we're trying now to take uh, that uh, experience and knowledge into a feed for a next modular based uh, plant. Um, our idea is that some of the parts of the process uh, cycle uh, is going to be produced off-site, brought in. Um, and we also have a plan to use EPC providers to help us with this rollout. I think that quantum field is too small, and I'm not sure that neither BISF or VTOL will allow us to build anything very close to their existing infrastructure. So our strategy is to find EPC providers that can build these large-scale plants in parallel in many places. Right now, we have a European focus, uh, but uh, we're also, of course, looking at opportunities outside of Europe. Next slide, please. Chemical recycling um, is going to be a tremendously large business uh, with or without counterfuel uh, but uh, we believe uh, that we have a unique technology uh, we believe that we in many ways have a first mover advantage and we have some very strong partners uh, we are financed uh, and uh, we have the opportunity to move fast uh, fast uh, so um, we have an ambition and goal that uh, Quantafuel should become one of the market leaders within this industry over the next uh, 10 to 15 years. Thank you for your attention.